Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Kyle. This is the 2002 Saab 93 convertible. I've rebuilt it about five years ago at this point and of course over the course of five years have done numerous repair work and upgrades and so on and so forth. And today we're about to continue to do those things. Let me explain. First things first, before I hop into this video, I hope everybody out there is safe and healthy during these crazy times around the world with COVID-19. I am, I have been in quarantine for the last week and a half. I have about a whole nother week of quarantining before I know I'm in the clear. It's 14 days since, since I've really been out in public in the next couple of days, another week. So I've been in quarantining. I am here with my car. I've been driving from my house. I am outside with my car outside. So I'm staying away from my family and everybody. Large social distancing. So I hope everybody out there stays safe. But let me explain to you what we're doing here today and why this upgrade is super, super important if you guys have an older generation Saab 93. All right guys, so pardon my lack of professional equipment here, but this right here is a layout of the subframe on a Saab 93 from this generation, whether it's the convertible or sedan. This is what the cradle looks like on underneath the car. The engine is hoisted up by two mounts on both sides, which go to the frame of the car. And then there's a rear frame that mounts right here for the transmission. So the engine and transmission is held in by three mounting points. Here's what this makes. This is what makes this car different than most any other car ever built from Saab or probably in general. Typically on a subframe, you have a rear brace and a front brace. Due to the fact that this is a front wheel drive car and the power that they were putting in, they had limited space for all of everything to be mounted to the subframe. On any traditional sedan, especially the 9.5, you have a brace here and a brace here, which allows you multiple different structural points and of course more stability in the frame itself. Obviously these here in the front are mounted to the frame of the car, but it allows a lot of movement in the car in terms of the body roll. Now, this is a convertible, so it makes it 10 times worse. In addition to that, since there's limited space to mount the power steering rack to the subframe, which on the 9.5, it's mounted to the, to the subframe and most cars, the Saab 9.3, they had to mount the steering rack to the firewall, which is on the top. So the power steering rack is not by any means structurally connected to the car. It is just mounted to the freaking firewall and that's why the steering is so terrible on these 9.3s in general. The, the performance around a turn when you're accelerating, you got massive torque steer and that's because the steering rack is completely unattached to any structure. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. All right guys, so before I show you inside the hood, this is the, this is the upgrade. This goes ahead and attaches to the power steering rack via this clamp right here. So right now there's currently a clamp on the power steering rack with a terrible bushing inside. So obviously this is a good time to upgrade the bushing on the other side, on the driver's side, if you guys really want to hone in on the performance of the power steering rack. But this is going to go around the power steering rack. This is going to attach via like this, or maybe like this, I should say. Okay, and then this side attaches to the side frame on the car. We're gonna drill out a hole and it's gonna attach to the frame of the car and that's where that goes. So now what this does is not only is this creating stability on the, on the rack itself in terms of no more bushing, right? So it's not gonna be vibrating in there, but this is going to actually secure everything to the structure of the car which will allow for less torque steer and of course better handling around turns. So let's get into this. Show you what I'm doing under here and I hope while I do this on camera I can get a good angle just so you guys can see. But here is the power steering rack right here and this here is the clamp that we're going to be removing and this bushing. This bushing here, I mean, is there's huge gappage already like just by looking at it with my naked eye. Oh. 
that bushing's for sure, for sure shot. You know, like terrible, terrible situation. So we're gonna take that off and then remount the other side over here, right where my finger points. So that's how that's gonna go. And uh, so yeah, we'll keep you guys in the loop here. All right, guys, a couple days later, it always helps to order the right parts. Just so you guys know, the older 900, mid to nine, 1990s models, before the 9.3 has a different uh, different power steering rack. So make sure you're right, ordering the right part for the right model year, because I didn't. Here we are, a couple days later, finishing the project. Anyways, I, uh, I wrestled the back part of this in. Uh, easier for me to, to get this in, this obviously the steering rack here is a little bit flexible. You can pull it out a little bit, just enough to get this in. These uh, fuel lines also have like a little clip that clips onto the bolt that comes out on the bottom of this. So make sure that's on there secured with one hand while you pull this out and wrestle that into place over the bolt on the bottom. There is a larger hole, as you can see here. There's a larger hole on the bottom here, which is where you need to wrestle that bolt into place that comes out of the firewall. So big and it's bigger to obviously be able to get that into place. And then on top of that, this will screw onto it all said and done. So slide it in and now we'll go ahead and uh, place the bracket in place. But before I go ahead and finalize that, I'm gonna start to cut away the plastic here uh, where the rivet is. Alright boys, hard to really film this, but it's really easy to explain. I, uh, I lined up this top bolt, which obviously secures the brace into play, so I just kind of put it in there to keep, make sure that this is up to par. Put the bottom piece in there, that, that uh, bronze looking one, and right here, underneath this, right where my finger is, is where that rivet is that you need to remove. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys. I finished. I finished tightening up everything. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of top coat on this bolt here, so things don't rust. All right, guys. All right, let's start her up. I'm super excited right now. I mean, already can feel just a little less play in the wheel. Take this thing for a spin. All right, I'm just gonna give you this perspective here for a minute. But I was getting a ton of play in the steering wheel because those bushings on the steering rack are old and original. And I can already tell you that the steering wheel doesn't even float like it used to. I'm also feeling a little bit less play in the wheel when I hit bumps. I still probably need to do a power flex on the driver's side mount, but already a million times better. Wow, guys, I can already tell you that the, preci the precision and reaction and responsiveness of the car is already so much better. A little bit less torque steer. Still there a little bit. I mean, the ground's a little wet, so that could affect some traction, but. The car 
it feels like a totally different car. upgrade for just a hundred hundred and fifty bucks I mean if you can find one of these things used it's like a hundred bucks if you're lucky but if you get one brand new from genuine Saab I went on their website genuinesaab.com you guys can pick up this this upgrade for your nine threes and I'm so disappointed in myself that I didn't buy this thing sooner it's unbelievable if you guys are somewhere else around the world and you need help grabbing this part let me know I can help you out um, for 150 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is, this thing changes the car 100%. Like I said, I gotta do the, I'm gonna still do the bushing on the driver's side, but the support structure and the responsiveness of the car is so much better. And the body roll is a little bit more refined. Instead of it being all over, in, instead of feeling 100% of it, 70% of it in the steering when you turn you're feeling it now just in the suspension of the car which is which is normal for any car so and I just passed a sad guy driving a 900 so that's pretty sweet but yeah guys this thing is so much more responsive in the ride is is there like originally you'd go and take a hard turn this car you feel you feel nervous in these older 93s because the body flex and the movement and the responsiveness is just so freaking sloppy especially when you have older bushings like I do in this car I've got a hundred almost I got 169,000 so they are original I obviously pulled out the one bushing on the driver's side or the passenger side and I will have to do the passenger driver's side next but wow 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 so much Alright guys, so as soon as I got home, I told Melanie she has to drive the car. I didn't tell her what I did. She has no idea. And I wanted to just get her behind the wheel to see if she feels a difference in the car. So Melanie, how's it going over there? It's going. I haven't driven my car in about two weeks now. The gas feels stiff. Be able to tell you if I notice any. going to leave you off on this guys I hope you enjoyed this quick video a uh, little upgrade on my 9.3 convertible here uh, yesterday I gave this thing a nice run since everybody's in quarantine to go out on the highway and just kind of have a little bit of fun for a minute is uh, is really nice and the car runs so nice super smooth everything has been uh, fixed and the last major fix that we did was a um, 2000 or $800 repair on an axle. So very interesting to see how much smoother the car is when I'm on the road. So I got this cop behind me here. So I hope you guys enjoy. Give it a thumbs up, give a comment, like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully this cop that's behind me right now doesn't pull me over. I will see you guys next time. And he's gone. I'll see you guys later.